So I think it's important to point out instances when our freedom is slipping away, because the media is certainly failing to do this. The first case I'd like to bring up is Susan Lindauer. Susan was a news reporter and a congressional aide and apparently had contacts in the Middle East and in the Bush administration. And she was making the radical claim in 2002, I think it was, that there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and there was no Saddam al-Qaeda connection. Shortly after she started making this claim, she was arrested by the federal government and charged with being an agent of the Iraqi government. But she wasn't brought to trial. The government then claimed that she was insane and she wasn't fit to stand trial. So she was held against her will for several years in a federal mental institution under the premise that she was an Iraqi agent, therefore it was okay to hold her against her will in a mental institution, yet she was insane, therefore it was okay to hold her without a trial, proving that she was an Iraqi agent. Finally, this case was thrown out. The interesting thing about the case, besides the fact that it just points out how far our government has crossed the line in some cases, is that there was not one word in the mainline media about Susan Lindauer. And the other interesting thing is the charge that she was originally making, that we were being taken to war under false pretenses. In my opinion, usually when you see an outrageous miscarriage of justice against a dissident like this, what the dissident is saying has a lot of truth to it. There's only one case I know of in recent history where an American citizen was thrown in jail by the federal government for a longer period of time than Susan Lindauer without a trial, and that's Martin Armstrong. The government's case against Martin Armstrong was that he was running a financial scheme, therefore he had to turn over the money that he had theoretically stolen in this financial scheme, and until he turned over the money, he wasn't allowed to get a trial to prove whether or not he had stolen money. Um, this ridiculous premise went on for seven years, and Mr. Armstrong was imprisoned without a trial. Finally, after a murder attempt and uh, a lot of other harassment in prison, Mr. Armstrong claimed that he feared for his life, and he plea bargained. Now, whether or not Mr. Armstrong was guilty, it's certainly unprecedented that an American citizen was thrown in jail for seven years without a trial. And also, you'll never hear a word about him in the mainline media. But what's the charge that Mr. Armstrong makes? Well, he makes the claim that the interests of his investment group were constantly butting up against what he calls the club, insiders in the banking industry, in particular Goldman Sachs. He claims that the club controls large segments of our government, and not only are they almost completely unregulated, but they use regulators to destroy competitors like himself. He claims that there's a revolving door between the banking industry and the federal government, particularly that Goldman Sachs has an undue amount of influence over the federal government. Now, I brought up these two cases for a number of reasons. First of all, I think it's every American's concern when citizens are thrown into jail without a trial. And I still believe we have one of the freest countries in the world, but if we don't pay attention to cases like this and demand justice, then we get the government we deserve. Secondly, I think it's important to recognize that the media has completely failed to do its job when the two most egregious cases of Americans being mistreated by their government are completely ignored. And you may say, well, Susan Lindauer and Martin Armstrong are just two minor people and it doesn't really prove that powerful interests in government or the financial industry can crush anyone who stands in their way. What if I said that the financial ruling class can remove almost anyone from power immediately if they want to. This happened recently right under everyone's noses, and as usual, the press completely diverted attention from it as much as possible. And that was with Elliot Spitzer. Everyone knows the story of Elliot Spitzer, and let's just assume that everything the media says is true, that he's a horrible human being. It doesn't diminish the fact that this man was targeted by the federal government and removed from power. The governor of New York used to be the second most powerful elected official in the United States. He was targeted by the federal government and removed from power. Thirty years ago there was ABSCAM where, I don't know, a few dozen congressmen were targeted by the FBI in a sting operation to try to entrap them. And there was all kinds of discussion in the media and questions you know, is this fair that we entrapped congressmen, even though they were from both parties and it was numerous individuals. But in this case with Elliot Spitzer, one individual was targeted. No other state governors were targeted. 
I imagine if you were somehow able to obtain all the records from just about any other politician in America, you'd probably find a lot more than a minor felony. And if you were able to get the media to constantly run a smear campaign, instead of focusing on the real issue of why one individual was being targeted, you could probably drive just about anyone out of power. Elliot Spitzer was famous as being the most aggressive financial reformer of our generation. He constantly targeted the banks, the predatory lending practices, any financial scheme out there. No one stood up to the financial industry the way that Elliot Spitzer did. And they targeted him and removed him. And Elliot Spitzer is just the most obvious example. There are countless other politicians who have their careers cut short or are subtly pushed out of power because they won't play ball with the financial industry. And you may think, well, this isn't that big a deal. It's always been going on. But it is a pretty big deal when our government is now controlled by these interests to the point that hundreds of billions of dollars of our future tax money are being given over to the banking industry. It's a lot more serious than it used to be. Most people who have pensions worked their entire life with the expectation that they could retire. They don't even realize that the money is being inflated right now at the behest of the banking industry to the point where your pension is pretty much going to be worth a fraction of what you thought it was worth. And the media is then going to tell you that evil speculators have driven up the price of everything and that's why you can't retire yet. The media and the government have been telling Americans for generations now that there's always some outside threat that's going to attack America. The communists, the terrorists, someone outside who's going to come and attack us. What nobody has paid attention to is that the real threat to America has already occurred, and it's occurred from the inside, from a small oligarchy that's gained more and more control. So what do you do about it? Well, I think there are a lot of potential solutions. One is just to continue to stand up for the ideals that made America one of the freest countries in the world. Americans generally stand up for one another's rights. But ultimately, I think the best chance of solution is for more and more Americans to continue waking up to what's occurred and begin to pull more and more of their money out of the financial industry. You're not going to get ahead in the first place by putting your money in a bank and earning 2% interest while the currency inflates at 10 or 20% a year. These financial entities aren't regulated. They control regulators. And by giving your money to them, not only are you losing, but you're giving power to this tiny oligarchy that's gained a partial stranglehold over our government. When people take back their wealth and control their own money by investing in land or precious metals or anything else which they own themselves, they take power away from the financial interests and they gain back power for themselves. And that's one more thing the media will never tell you.